I think people like happy movies, and um, I certainly don't feel like I was treating that age group with disrespect. It was like a fun version of a classy kind of world for teenagers. It was not like, oh my God, look what kids are doing now. It was like, here, this is what's going on, kind of, not really, but fun, happy. <laughs> It revolutionized teen movies by raising the bar. Uh, teen movies were just sort of tossed off for, they didn't realize the teens were this smart, that you could actually make a movie with something in it. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, but thy eternal summer shall not fade. Bat, did you write that? So that's like a famous quote. From where? Cliff's Notes. Oh. It's a smart film. It doesn't assume that the audience is, is stupid, and it doesn't assume that the audience is nasty. It nice assumes the audience is, is smart, intelligent, clever. Chair. Present. I guess we established that during attendance. It's time for your oral. Excuse me? We never even thought of this as a teen movie. We just thought of it as a movie. It just charmed everybody and really made them realize the potential of what was there. The people that do see it are gonna come back and tell their friends, hey, you need to go see this film. You know, it's really good. And, you know, and I had a good time. And if I'm wrong, I never said this. I remember the day that we were gonna show it for Sherry Lansing. And Amy and I were sitting, I was, you know, Amy was there and Sherry was right behind me. And Sherry laughed through the whole movie. And she's got a really great laugh. Amy and I kept like kicking each other and stuff. It was fabulous. First time I saw it, I was with Alicia, I was with Brecken and Paul Rudd. And to see how the audience responded was amazing. Like I said, I had no idea. I don't think any of us did. I absolutely remember the first time I saw the film. There was a screening, there was a test audience there, and we were all sitting in the back. And as soon as the credits started rolling, I looked at Alicia and I said, you're gonna be a huge star. And you could tell that she was excited. I was like, oh my God, this film's gonna be huge. All I could do was look at my hair. I'm a hair obsessed fool. I hated myself on camera for the most part. I just couldn't deal with it. My voice, my do, my movements. Aside from that, I knew how good it was. I remember coming out and being like, you were great. I sucked, but you were great. And everybody was <laughs> I was like, oh, that's how it works out here. Yeah, I suck too. You were great. <laughs> this one guy came up to me and he said, I gotta tell you, man, I went into rehab after I saw Clues because I figured if Travis Birkenstock could go to rehab, then I could go to rehab. And I thought, you know, okay, that's sick. First of all, you, you know, you, there's be so many other reasons for going into rehab. But uh, this one guy went into rehab because of Travis, which kind of blew my mind. I was on vacation in a cabin <laughs> in a... Montana, when the movie came out, no phones, no television, no anything. A couple of days after the movie came out, some guy from the local grocery store walked up my driveway, handed me his envelope. This came for you at the grocery store. As my agent sent me the clippings from the New York Times, and I was like, I had no idea that it was gonna be that well received. <laughs> Amy's not at all what you expect. Being a young actor and going and meeting with all these directors and stuff, you don't expect this kind of Japanimation looking adorable girl, which Amy is, you know? She had black eyeliner on, really cute Tim Burton hair, and she was wearing like tights and a black skirt. I mean, it was just like Amy's uniform. She was super cute. She was one of the rare times where you're really, really attracted to your director. The term, it's all good, Amy is that term. I mean, she is that living embodiment of that term. I really attribute it to Amy, her being able to have her finger on the pulse of what's going on, what's now, what, what do kids like? What do teenagers, what are they into? Well, I was sitting in my house and like this like muse came to me. It was like this like goddess and like this gossamer dress and all. And, and said like, do a movie about somebody that's like really, really pretty and blonde and rich and has a lot of nice clothes. So I said, okay. You really wouldn't guess that Amy is the person who's directing the movie. If you just walked in, she has absolutely none of the style of the boss. She makes it feel great fun for the actors, and I think everybody in the whole movie had a great time. <laughs>
I love doing it. It's one of the favorite experiences, actually, really. Every part of it, I loved every scene. All of it was just pure pleasure. You mean to tell me that you argued your way from a C plus to an A minus? Totally based on my powers of persuasion. You proud? Uh, honey, I couldn't be happier than if they were based on real grades. <laughs> it was fantastic. I've not had such a good experience on a film since, and it was surreal, you know? Something like that just does not happen, and I'm thankful to Amy for allowing me to be a part of it. She basically did something that, you know, is, is really unique, which is making everyone feel so comfortable within their atmosphere and their character and, and creating this environment that's so conducive to, you know, to doing your work in and not making it feel like work at all. You really just could trust her because you knew she wasn't going to let you look like an idiot. At the same time, she'd let you try things and go, okay, that looks stupid, let's not do that. Hey. Proper. This is really decent of you, Travis. Sure. There's a part where Travis is giving his bong to the Pismo Beach Fund. I wasn't sure about that. I don't need it anymore, but far be it for me to deny anyone else, you know? It's the moment where he tells Cher that he's in rehab and hands her the bong, and she's a... Um, I guess kitchenware? And I said, that's where I used to keep it. And it was just one of these things where I said to him, I was like, can I just say this? I have a funny I'd like to add. Can I add a funny to it? And she was like, yeah, try it. We did, and it worked, and it was funny. Amy gives you just exactly as much direction as you might need. She has very much in mind the story that she wants to tell. Marker. Good luck, Wendell and Toby. She's extraordinary at finding the words to get the actor to do what she needs them to do. If you don't need many words, she doesn't say many. And if you do, then she says the right ones in a sort of very gentle way. An actor prepares. <laughs> she makes every, everything that she does seem so effortless. She makes this brilliant pop culture iconoclastic film. I have no idea that, you know, that that's what it was to be and that's what I was a part of or any of those things. It, it was really fun and great job. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I mean, my little girl's gonna watch Clueless. I have a Barbie doll. <laughs> You know, that's amazing. My grandchildren are going to say, wow, that was granny. <laughs> one of the coolest things about this film was the appeal that it had to everyone of so many different age groups was pretty classic. I think everybody can relate to it. I think that's why. Everybody wanted to fit in in some way. Uh, whether you were the popular one or you were the geek, everybody was clueless in their high school years and didn't realize how lucky they had it. I think Clueless became an icon of pop culture because like many other pop culture comforts, certain TV shows you can watch over and over again, it makes you feel safe, it makes you feel good, it's part of you. It's one of those films that there are little nuggets in that you want to just watch over and over and over again. Whatever. This um, movie, Clueless, was much more of my fantasy of what I sort of would have liked everything to be like, not the way it is. I mean, you don't go to high school and see the blacks and whites hanging together and everybody having enough money for nice clothes. That's not the real world, but it would be a nice world. <laughs>